that's right. We're right here at Sharp Facets Gallery this afternoon. It's 4.07. It must be time for Meet Me at the Diner. And my very special guest today, Dr. Dan Ball, president of Lander University. How are you doing today, Dan? Uh, it's a Monday, and I'm doing well. Monday, and the, and the day is almost over. Well, half, a little over half hour, well, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of things that been going on at Lander. We're going to talk about a lot of different things, but... What do you think about the direction and what's happening with Lander right now? Well, you know, Lander probably is as well positioned for the future as it has ever been. In my view, we've, we're adding uh, three or four new uh, academic programs uh, subject to approval by the state, which we think will happen this, this spring. Uh, one of those programs is, uh, is called uh, Emergency Management. Mm -hmm. uh, we think we'll have the only well. We will have the only one in the state of South Carolina. It'll pr largely be online for people that are already place bound. Uh, we'll have a we're proposing a master's degree in nursing. We're going to resurrect an, an old program that uh, we we mothballed about ten years ago. We're re revising it. We found that uh, what program is that? It's called the interdisciplinary studies program. We found that there are thirteen hundred. Former students of Lander in the last 15 years, that's about 100 a year, that are out working in our local community here within a radius of 100 miles or less mm -hmm. that did not complete their degree. Okay. And that have completed over 75 hours of the 120 required. Between 75 and 100 hours, they haven't completed their degree. We're going to try to recapture those guys and gals <laughs> and let them finish up a degree. And so we're going to we propose resurrecting that old program to help these place-bound, non-traditional students complete their degree. And they've had to leave for various reasons, you know, family reasons, health reasons, relocation reasons, whatever. You know, some colleges out there, you see them advertised on TV, that are saying that the life experience that students have gotten out there, whether it's working in their own business, working in somebody else's business, our life experience that can help them get their degree and they'll give them credit. Is that something that you're looking at? We always look at those kinds of things. Yes, experience is uh, very valuable in terms of getting a degree. As a matter of fact, we're hoping that all of our students will have some sort of work experience, an internship, if you will, uh, for all of our students before they graduate. That's our goal. We have several hundred doing that now. We hope to have all of our students experience that before they graduate. That's one of our goals. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, to recapture those students out there, they, they, they've already done some of these things that maybe you would need book learning if they were. Well, I'll tell you what. I've gone to college, and uh, both as a student, I've been a professor, I've been an administrator, I've been a fan. And I can tell you, if you work hard enough, and it isn't, it's not that difficult. If you spend the time and commitment, if you'll study two hours for every hour you're in class, you're going to make the dean's list. And I don't, I don't care if you're at Princeton or Lander, you're going to make a dean's list. And it's not that difficult. People make things more difficult than they, than they really are. It, it's a life experience. Going to college is a life experience. It should not be a chore. It should not be a hurdle. It should be a life experience. If you approach it that way, if you're 18 years old or 48, if you approach it that way, you will have, you'll enjoy it. Now, just just out of just out of curiosity, how uh, in a proportion to young people that eighteen to twenty five bracket and those that are forty five and up bracket, what is the relationship there at Lander? We have about seventy percent of our students are traditional, eighteen to twenty four years old. Those that that percentage is going down. We're getting more and more uh, students over twenty four. We're getting a few under eighteen, but more and more the non traditional adult is coming back to college. They've, they've experienced the real world, so to speak. They see some deficiencies in their preparation background or their desire, and they come back to college. And uh, we're trying to make that as painless and as barrier-free as possible. Absolutely. Now, you know, I know that um, as far as Lander is concerned, across the whole spectrum of all the state schools, what is, what why should a student go to Lander? What What is your focus as opposed to USC or Orangeburg State or any of these? I had lunch today with, with a Lander student, a junior, and I asked him, what 
did you look? What made you come to Lander? He and he said, well, he said I was accepted to the College of Charleston. I went through a, a couple other schools in Lander, uh, and he said I looked at three things. I looked at the mate, the, the program that I wanted to study, which was healthcare, healthcare management. I looked at class size, and I looked at what engagements I could get involved with while I was on campus. And I think that that would be the stereotype for a lot of our kids. What do we have to offer? What academic programs? What kind of relationship do we have with the faculty? And is it a pleasant, safe learning environment? And I think we have all those. We have the, we have the same academic programs as most other schools, nursing, business, liberal arts, science, pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law, uh, education, all those, everybody has those mm -hmm. that are, no, that are comprehensive we universities. Yeah. We're unique in that we started a lot of stuff in this state that we were the first to do. For example, we have the first and only Montessori teacher education program in the state of South Carolina. We had the first online RN to BSN degree in the state of South Carolina. We had the first. We were the first campus to go smoke tobacco free, both indoors and outdoors. First campus in the state of South Carolina to do that. We had the first genetics program of its kind in the state of South Carolina. We had the first environmental science program in the state of South Carolina. Now, all these other schools have gotten these programs. Uh, are you saying they copied you? Then? Well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm just saying that we are a little bit entrepreneurial. We're going to take some chances and try some new things and have some new programs. And we're very proud of that. So, if you want to come to an entrepreneurial campus, Lander might be a good place for you to start. Absolutely. You know, it's a beautiful campus. I think one of the things, the size, it's a smaller school, so you don't have as many. And, of course, the classes. And I think you've always said that you just can't hide at Lander. <laughs> well, that's, pa parents <laughs> like to hear that, for sure. Now, some students would prefer to hide, but most of them don't. Most of the kids want to be engaged. They want to be... Uh, recognize they want their thoughts and their ideas and their presence to be there to, to mean something to other people besides themselves you know if you, if you miss class people notice that at Lander now in a larger school you probably don't you know they don't notice you're going you're in a class of 400 and you're gone nobody's gonna miss you sure. if you're in a class of 20 they're gonna miss you that, somebody's gonna miss you absolutely and the professor might be one of those people that miss you, <laughs> misses you <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, you've got your um, overseas program. We've got a new honors college that starts next year, of course, out there at Burton Center, the equestrian program. And, of course, you've got that fabulous center right across the street, the May Center there. What has been the effect of the May Center? Well, I think it's a, a bonding uh, venue for our community and our, our, our city and our university. Uh, we've had lots of positive events out there, lots of positive comments. The usage has been phenomenal for our community. I rarely go by there where, where I don't see folks walking on that walking track that's open to the public. Um, we were fortunate enough to we'll be having the Peach Belt Conference baseball tournament here next month. Wow. Uh, in, in May, I'm sorry, early May. Mm -hmm. And that'll be 10 or 12 universities coming in here with 25 or 30 players and coaches, and then moms and dads and brothers and sisters and girlfriends and boys, well, girlfriends will be coming, mm -hmm. spending uh, a few days in Greenwood, sure. eating, eating and sleeping and doing those things. So it's economically been beneficial, in my view, for our community. Uh, it's certainly helped our baseball team. Uh, uh, we are number two in the country as of this afternoon. Number two in number the country. Two, we are ranked number two in the country in baseball. We've traditionally. It's amazing what a field can do for you. Well, <laughs> uh, That's not exactly it, is it, Dan? Well, it's part of it. It's certainly part of you. Don't recruit students to uh, dilapidated facilities. Mm -hmm. You need to have a place for them to live and learn, and play. Sure. And uh, we have a great we have a great baseball coaching staff. Uh, Kermit Smith, just an outstanding individual, and even a better coach. And uh, we're just fortunate to have him and his family here in Greenwood. This is his third year, I believe, and he's gone. We've had a fairly decent baseball program, but it has really, really taken off this these past two years. And I've watched them play, and they're they're tough. 
Yeah. There's a ball game tomorrow night, by the way. Uh, we're playing Erskine, and Erskine and Lander have traditionally been rivals. And the Erskine, by the way, has a great baseball coach and program, so it should be a good ball game. And that is going it's to at, be. It's at Jeff May Complex. I think it's sometime at six o'clock, maybe something like that. So it'll be a good game to get out there. If, and if the your weather team. holds, y'all ought to be out there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's the good thing about having this great facility right here, and you also do the soccer there, Well, too. we have we have 70% of our athletes are out there. We have soccer, men and women's, tennis, men and women's, baseball, and softball, and those sports comprise 70% of our athletes. Soccer, baseball are big teams. Basketball is small. Golf is small. Sure. Volleyball is small. Those are, you know, uh, not out there, obviously. You don't Absolutely. play golf out there. Now, what about you're building something out there right now? Right, we right. were. That's a called. That's the field house. That'll be the locker rooms, the dressing rooms, for visiting and home teams that come. Right now, we're having to bus them back and forth to the campus to dress it, dress out, uh, take showers, etc. And uh, we were unable to build that initially. We didn't have the funds to do that. Now we've uh, been able to raise the funds to complete that project. Where did the funds come from? Well, a variety of sources. Uh, we uh, borrowed money through a bond, a bond uh, issuance. Mm -hmm. We had several donations. For example, the city of Greenwood gave us $1.5 million over a five-year period to help us with that project. We've had several private donations, anywhere from you know, thousand to five thousand to fifty thousand to one hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. That's pretty impressive. And uh, the students uh, have uh, taken upon themselves to assess themselves as part of their activity fee to help pay for that as well. Oh, pretty impressive. It is. Hey, we're here with Dr. Dan Ball from Lander University. He is the president. He is the top kahuna right here on WCRS this afternoon. We're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hey, if you've got a question, give us a call. 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be right back. That's right. We're right back here at Sharp Passes Gallery on the 72 Bypass. We have Dr. Dan Ball just, uh, I got him cornered right here in my studio. <laughs> We're having a good time talking about what goes on in Lander. It's been a good while since we've had him on. And, of course, I love keeping up with what goes on at Lander. In fact, I love to talk about it. You know, one of the things that you were able to dedicate this year was the uh, equestrian center there with the new enclosure. What has that meant for uh, for the equestrian program? You know, there are really three parts to that program or that center. We have we have a, an equestrian team. As a matter of fact, we have two teams: Western Riding Team and an English Hunt Seat Team. That's how it got started. Is it has expanded into an academic program, the Therapeutic Horsemanship Academic Minor, and a partnership with Burton Center using uh, equine therapy for the consumers that uh, are part of the Burton Center. Mm -hmm. It's been a great partnership. I'm gonna get into the research of how horses and uh, special needs people. Uh, well, I think the bottom line is it helps stimulate how, particularly if they cannot walk, the movement that you that you have when you walk. Isn't and that correct? The movement of the horse does stimulate several things in a human, as I understand it. Not just uh, physical, but mm -hmm. even mental and emotional uh, improvement in, in, the, in the consumers out there. And so we that's the third component of it. Uh, the dedication of the arena, the covered arena, was uh, in January. We've actually been in business out there about three years, but we did not have that arena cover. And weather-related events uh, caused lots of cancellations of uh, classes and writing lessons, et cetera. And so the dedication of the roof, the arena, we call it the big top, uh, has really uh, improved the, the, the utility of that facility. Sure. So. Uh Really, when you drive out there and when you see it, it is a phenomenal. Now, you know, that, and that's a very interesting story, how that started. Didn't that start with a, some kids coming and saying they wanted it, but two, <laughs> then you had a donation, didn't you, to well, put something together? Well, it's a long story. I don't know what you want to hear. The short one. The short one. I had five or six uh, young students, Lander, come, wanted to start an equestrian team. They wanted $1,000. I gave it to them 10, 12 years ago. Uh, they came back a second year, wanted some more money, and I said no. 
And they said, that's not fair, Dr. Ball. We, you used us to promote this campus. You took our pictures and put them in magazines and blah, blah. I said, okay, how much you want? It's a couple thousand. I gave it to them. That article in the Lander magazine was seen by a former uh, Lander graduate out in Florida who was on the equestrian team in the 1930s. <laughs> she gave us over $200,000 to embellish that program. That's how I got started. Right. So somebody reading an article about something that happened started by six students 10, 12 and years just ago. think, if you hadn't given them that $2,000, where would you be today? You might not have that program. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. And so that's how things uh, mushroom there. And uh, uh, we hope to, but we're the only one in the state. I think I So that you. makes you a very unique program. Now, how is that program growing? Well, we have 30 students in the program. We have like 18 or so in the equestrian or therapeutic horsemanship program. All those students that ride horses take classes. They're full-time students. Mm -hmm. So there are 20 or so kids out there that wouldn't be there were it not for the equestrian effort. Now, Dan, what is a student, a student, worth to the college? I mean, how, how does it work out economically versus one you, student equals what? You can put a price tag on a student. I hate to do that, but I will just for you, Ann, since you're a good friend. We, we think that a student brings to the campus about $15,000. Tuition year? per year. Per year. That's tuition, that's books, that's housing, food, uh, you know, tra everything, parking, and all, all, that. all that. So that's about $15,000. It's probably. So that's a, little, a pretty big yeah. investment. Well, sure, if you have 100 students, that's you, you do the math. Right. You know, our budget is about $45 million a year operating budget. And, and speaking of budget, so how, how does, is $45 million enough to, to do all the things you need to do at Lander? Uh, no, but it never will be. If it was $90 million, we'd figure out a way to say that's not enough. But it quite Sounds hurts. just like education or any well, of these other things where we I, can I, spend money. I will tell you that uh, the value for, for the money that is spent, I think the value is as good as any place in the country. Now. You know, there are schools in this you know, in this country that have valet parking for their students. You know, uh, how are they learning anything, well, Dan? Here, if uh, we got to have valet parking uh, for them, I could go uh, off on a tangent on that one. Uh, we're we're a fairly uh, frugal institution. We don't have a lot of frills, uh, but we what we do offer, I think, is very high quality. Very high quality. We have the best nursing program in the state of South Carolina. For example, Who says the very so? best. Who says so? The, the data. The data? The, the student performance on exams, the NCLEX exam, the uh, placement rate, the bonuses that they get for signing with a hospital or a clinic, the uh, uh, talk to talk to some people that work with our former students that are nurses and let them tell you what kind of nurses they are. The best in the state of South Carolina. Better than USC? Better than USC. Oh, boy, now there's a state. Better than anybody in the state. Better we can, than anybody we're, in the we're state. We're the oldest program, too, by the way. Are you really? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Okay. So, uh, and then, of course, we have the equestrian program. we got a lot of programs. When we come back, we are going to be talking about some of these programs. There's a film festival coming up in, uh, when is that coming up? In April, I think, or May? April? April, March 30th. Coming mm -hmm. up March 30th. You also have a peace studies program. Uh, program this Thursday, I believe. Yeah, it's correct. Yep. So there's a lot of stuff going on at Lander, and of course, I know one of the big things that you're always trying to do is get more people to come see Lander and be part of what's going on at Lander. Well, it's a state institution. We don't have bars and fence around it. Uh, you're welcome to drive in there, stop by my office, or attend a, a student performance uh, free of charge. Sure. Uh, I think the only thing we charge for are maybe basketball, baseball. The rest of the rest of the sports are free. All of our student um, performances, music, theater, art are free. Uh, wind ensemble, jazz ensemble. There's a lot of good theater. stuff. Theater, yeah. yeah there's good, a lot good, of good stuff going on. Uh, if nothing else, you can come over and have Sunday brunch. Uh, you have to pay for that. It's about ten, eight, ten bucks. <laughs> but uh, that is open to the public. That's right, and that's another thing is that we don't always realize when we're talking about a place to go. Hey, I tell you what, it's time for South Carolina news and a word from our sponsors. Don't you go away.
Uh, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. That's right. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery. We are talking with Dr. Dan Ball. God, Dan, how long have you been here? Thirteen years. Lucky thirteen. Lucky thirteen? Yes. <laughs> and Enjoyed every minute of it. Absolutely. And I understand that you actually are, have you moved out of the house there? That we did. We, we moved out, uh, gosh, November. We, well, actually, we, yeah, we moved into the other, our house, our house in November. What's going to happen to the property there? I, I wish I knew. Yeah, there's, the, there's, some, there's some structural problems with the president's house, and uh, to fix such those, such a beautiful house. Uh, to fix those is going to require some significant resources, uh, several hundred thousand dollars, uh, and the board is deliberating on what to do with that house. In the meantime, we're out. I I asked the board. I said, look, I'm going to, going to be here forever. And uh, if I have to move out, I'll move out. But I don't want to have to move back in and have to remodel and then another year or two move out again. Sure. So can I just get my own house? They said sure. So. So that's where we are. So you have a you, a house that you have redone. I know yes. I've talked to Marge yeah. several times, and yes. it was quite an ordeal. Well, it's a beautiful old home that's been uh, upgraded to very very nice facility that we're very proud of. Absolutely. It's over there on Stanley Avenue, right across from Laura Lander Hall. It's the old Sneed home, in case someone remembers that. Remembers that, yes. Well, absolutely. Well, that, that is terrific. I just did want to mention that because I know a lot of people kind of wondered what sure. happened there. Yeah. But, um, you know, one of the things that did come out in the news was that you were doing away with the physical education and exercise study program. What happened there? Well, uh, I don't mean to be... I don't mean to correct you, but it's our athletic training sorry, program. Sorry. Our physical education and our exercise science stu studies program are still still there, going going very well. The athletic program training program was suspended for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, we were only graduating an average of about two students per year out of that program. That's it, hard to sustain, isn't it? It's pretty tough to sustain. Now, the bad news is that a lot of students wanted to. They came here, not a lot, but 20, 30 students would come here with the idea of majoring in athletic training. Mm -hmm. But after a semester or so, they changed the majors because it was a very time-consuming, very intense, difficult program. So a lot of people didn't, a lot of kids didn't realize the toughness. It That's sounds right. like it, It's like nursing, in a way. Uh, nursing, we graduated about 40, 50 or 60 a year of nursing, but we have 300 students that want to be nurses. Wow. So what's going to happen to that program? Now, well, you have some students that are in the program we, right yeah, now. Yeah, right. And we will, we will guarantee that those students will finish from the accredited athletic training program. and It'll take two or three years, so we'll, the program will still be going for two or three years. We will not be admitting any more students to that program at this time. Hopefully, it may have a chance of being resurrected at the graduate level. At least that would be something I would consider favorably. For this reason, uh, we have a lot of athletes that would like to take that major but cannot because of the time commitments of both, being a soccer player or a baseball player and being an athletic training major, they just, those, that's oil and water, they don't mix because of the time conflicts. So if we were at the graduate level, so when a student finished his or her undergraduate degree and finished their eligibility, they could go into a master's program in athletic training. And some schools do that now. Okay. And and you had said one of the other issues was the fact that uh, Lander doesn't have a football team. Well, you, the, the intensity of the time is that these students have to spend time on the practice fields and on the courts. Uh, they have to get several thousand hours of practical training in. And football is a big sport with a lot of injuries. <laughs> And so if you don't have a football program, uh, you have, uh, you're at a disadvantage in terms of placing students into those 
internships. So that, uh, that, that was another, you said actually some of the students go to uh, Greenwood High, they do. World High, Abbeville. Yeah. Right, and do their uh, training out there in the high schools. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it was kind of presented as it was all a budget fall. Well, shortfall. It, you know, budgets uh, ebb and flow like everything else, and uh, when you have uh, less revenue than you expected, you look at places where you can reduce your costs, mm -hmm. and certainly program costs are 80% 80, 80 of our operating costs are people, over 80% of our budget is people. And so you have to look at people, the wise use of those people, and uh, that just happened to be a programmatic uh, recommendation from the, the vice president and the dean. Mm -hmm. And so I, fought, I took their recommendation, and, and it saved us some dollars. Sure. Uh, but primarily the budget imbalance was because we budgeted for an increase in enrollment for this year and didn't get it. Okay. And we're, and we're going to not make that mistake again. That's the first time in 13 years we did that, and it won't happen again. Uh, we're going to budget differently for next year when we're already working on that. So we're fine, but the budget's fine. Absolutely. Now, you know, I, I'm just curious because um, as, as education grows, and, of course, uh, you and I were having a little discussion about our, the, the validity of a bachelor's degree when we have so many students who were just becoming technically um, well uh, it's that's a uh, philosophical discussion I love to engage sure. in uh, in today's world in today's world our there's a more emphasis placed on vocational uh, education than on academic education in other words I'm going to go to school so I can get a better job or I can get a job. And certainly that is a benefit of an education, but it's not the not the real purpose of an education. For the purpose of education is not to get a better job or get a job. That's a that's a fringe benefit. The purpose of an education is to become a better person, to become a more enlightened voter, to become a, a more a, to be able to tolerant individual of uh, differences of, you know, suppose you didn't like the way I'm talking today. You'd at least, if you had a college degree, you might be a little more tolerant of my biases <laughs> than, <laughs> than, uh, than, than if you didn't have. So, uh, Don't you think it helps in critical thinking, being it able does. to, it, to figure things well, out? You've got to be able to balance your checkbook, yeah. be able to make wise choices when you're buying a house or a car or, uh, uh, or getting married, perhaps, sure. or... Where you might live. What do you think in today, though? We have kids that are uh, geeks at four years old. I mean, everybody is on a computer. What do you think that's going to mean for education and for the small personal schools like Lander futuristically? Well, I'm, I'm a little old-fashioned, Ann, but I, I'm concerned a little bit about our, our social skills of our young people, even our adults. They we do not engage in active uh, dialogue as much as we used to, mm -hmm. and uh, we become we're isolating ourselves from each other, and I think that that's not healthy. Now, what do we do about it? You you have you have choices. People have choices. Lander University is committed to an education whereby there is social engagement on a regular basis, and you don't wake up and attend class in your pajamas by turning on the TV or the computer screen. Now we, we do have online have courses. Classes. We yeah. have online courses like everybody else. We're trying to be competitive and we are. But if you're living on our campus and you're in a residence hall and you need to take English one oh one, you should not you should be required to go to the class to take English one oh one rather than roll out of bed and turn your computer on. Now that's my opinion and I'm gonna stick with it. <laughs> Do you ever make them turn off all the computers all across the campus <laughs> and, and take their telephones and their tablets and uh, say, now we're going to have a real conversation? You know, you know what? I'm glad you <laughs> asked that question. Uh, the other day, a few weeks ago, I went to my senior staff in a senior staff meeting. I said, what do you all think about just banning email for two weeks on this campus? Nobody can send any emails. I thought two or three of them were going to have heart attacks. 
And I said, well, you know, what we used to do when we didn't have email, we had to communicate. Well, we'd walk down the hall or we'd get on the phone. Right. Today we send an email. And I just thought it was a novel idea, but we didn't do it. You didn't do it. Well, you know, there have been places where it's a, a class has decided. I've read about these where they've decided for a week or a weekend or whatever, and the results have been interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or where a family actually has to sit down and have a meal together and talk. What a novel idea. Huh? What a novel idea. <laughs> what an old-fashioned idea. Yeah. Hey, I'm here with Dan Ball. When we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit more about things that you can get involved in over at Lander. So don't you go away. And if you got a question, don't hesitate to give us a call. 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be right back. Oh, that's right. We're right back here at Sharp Passes Gallery. I have Dr. Dan Ball with us here today. And, you know, one of the questions that has come in is um, the Sunday Buffet. You uh, pique somebody's interest with the Sunday Buffet over there at Lander. Tell us a little <laughs> bit more about that, Dan. Well, we started that several years ago, actually uh, full well knowing that our dining hall is open to the public whenever it's open. Anybody in any state of uh, stupor, I guess, could come to have breakfast, dinner, lunch, or dinner at uh, Lander University. So we thought it would be nice to have a special treat on Sundays, have a Sunday brunch, where we have, and it's open to the public, it's like, it's less than ten bucks, I'm not sure what it's, eight or nine bucks, something like that. And we have uh, uh, the, the whole spread of, uh, we have a carving station, we have a salad bar, we have a dessert bar, we have an omelet station, we have uh, uh, fruit, uh, we have uh, Just about pancakes, you, you have yeah. several kinds of meats, we have fried chicken, uh, and you can come and have a brunch for less than 10 bucks. And it's a, we have an ice cream machine as a matter of fact, uh, and it's all you can eat and go back and get as much as you want. It's One kind of price. A buffet style. You and we have two or three hundred. We have two or three hundred people from the community about every Sunday. Now, any would you eleven know to two? Are? Eleven to two. Okay. Eleven there to you two. Go. I didn't know whether the president would know that or not, yeah. but eleven well, to two. Uh, well, I get hungry. I go over there. You go yeah. over there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner there during the week when they're open. Yeah, when the students are here. Now yeah. this week they've been on students. We're, last week we're on break. We had spring break for three days, or all week really. So the dining hall was closed last okay. week. So, but when students are when the classes are in session, the dining hall's open. Absolutely. So check that out. And of course, where is that on campus? It's in the uh, uh, student center. The uh, if you know where the auditorium is, it's right adjacent to the auditorium. Absolutely. So uh, go out there and check that out. You won't be disappointed. Now you're starting a new program coming up this fall. It's called the Honors College. What brought yes. that about? Well, we uh, we've always uh, had a, a group a small group of outstanding honors students and we felt it was time to give them some special treatment give them some special privileges and let them develop their own uh, cadre of uh, groups, study groups etc and so beginning this fall we will have an honors college you know, there are certain admission standards to get in it and we hope to start out with like 20 or 30 students maybe a few more start small and then grow that over the years and um, anybody is eligible. Now what is It's an academic of? program. Okay. Uh, several of our students came to me and to others over the years saying we need to be more academically uh, challenged, we need to have more opportunities, we want to have our own place to study, we want to have, maybe you have a special wing in a residence hall. Uh, we haven't gotten that far yet, but we're, we are going to have that this fall, uh, where students will have their own special places, locations. Mm -hmm. uh, some people might consider that a little bit elitist, but you know, uh, most good universities have honors colleges, sure. and so we're just going to start one. So it's going to, um, I guess, elevate, elevate some visibility? It will. It will bring us better students. More academically talented students, it'll uh, give us visibility that we have not had as much of as we need. 
now and also you will be uh, students will be going to uh, some internships like to Washington DC or the Smithsonian this is what I was one of the about this. one of the requirements of an honors college student is they'll have some additional requirements that their general student body won't have and one will be to study away somewhere either abroad or uh, some other location. Chicago is quite different than Greenwood, by the way. So maybe somebody might want to study in Chicago or Minneapolis or London or Beijing or do an internship in Washington, D.C., which we've started uh, our internship program there this past year. Uh, so the students can pretty much carve out that special project. Uh, uh, they will have a lot of voice in, in what that will be. Absolutely. Now, you know, speaking about Beijing, and uh, we have had, of course, Dr. Park here for a couple, three years yes. now, and he has been instrumental in uh, bringing some cultural students from overseas to here. I just heard you're going to have, what, some a group from Thailand here. We're going to have 22 professionals, ages 30 to 50-some years old, come to Greenwood and Lander. They'll be here tonight and they'll stay here in Greenwood for a month and they'll be living with host families in the community learning about our educational system in this country and in, in specifically at Lander. There'll be 22 of them, they're paying their own way. Uh, the host families will actually receive payment uh, from these uh, professionals to stay in their homes. They really want to meet American families to find out the, what goes on in the American family as well as the educational system that we have. So we're excited about that, the first time that's ever happened. Uh, last summer we had a group of Korean professionals here. Uh, we'll probably have another group this summer. And that, that, those are all uh, the result of Dr. J. Park, Dr. Sun J. Park's uh, work for us for the past two years. And so. you have quite a few students from uh, Korea and China that are studying yeah. over here. We have about you? 30 Asian students, mostly from China and Korea. Uh, studying, uh, s most of them are on uh, uh, s study abroad, uh, one year program, some are on one semester, mo uh, many are on full four year programs that are coming here, like we have five Chinese students that are freshmen, they'll be here for four years. And we, hope, we hope to have another additional five for next fall, so then in two years we'll have ten. Three so years you've gone outside ten. the country to get students, right? Well, <laughs> Uh, we are the culture of our campus is always enriched when you can bring in different cultures from around the world. This is a global. Absolutely. This is a global economy today, and uh, if if we have Asian students here to help our South Carolinians learn a little bit more about them and vice versa, that's just that benefits everybody. It's a global world, and we need to get into it. And, and we have Atlanta. Now, how about students going and spending semesters in Korea or in China? How's that working? It's working out very well. We have a cadre over there right now. We've, every semester we've had a few students. In the summer we have a, a larger group of students going over spending a month or six weeks. We have two of our academic deans over there left this morning to go to China and Korea. Dr. Dave Slimmer. Dr. Yes, Slimmer. I to him on Dr. Saturday. Slimmer and, uh, of course, there's a little bit of anxiety going to Korea with the North Korean saber rattling over there, but you know our State Department will take care of. It. We got a lot of South Korea, right? Yeah, South Korea. South Korea. Yeah. yeah. And uh, after all, if Dennis Rodman can go over there <laughs> and wow, <laughs> and wow him. He went to North Korea. By I know, way. but maybe <laughs> maybe some of our professors can do something. But um, what about the students going over there and staying a semester or so? Well, they they have told me uh, almost to the person that's been a life-changing experience. Uh, they had no idea of the, uh, uh, the experience would be what it was. And we have kids that have, are working over there now. They've taken jobs oh in Korea goodness. and Thailand, teaching English and doing other things over there. Students? They're, our former students are working over there right now. And How we want to have this program for a little over two years. Yeah, that's terrific. It is. It, it is. is. And, and how about, you know, you and I were talking earlier, there seems to be uh, geographical areas that uh, students like to go to. Well, you know, and again, it's a, it's a, it's a provincial culture issue. American students, for the most part, like to study abroad, right, in the past at least, in Europe or South America. 
they've been fearful of going to Asia. We are breaking that barrier down at Lander, and we are having a lot more American students go to study and work in Asia. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of the globe, the Asian students all want to come to the United States. Very few European students want to come to the United States. It's, those are cultural differences. Uh, why? It's just that that's just the way it's been. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. So we have a lot of Asian students wanting to come study here. We are getting more American students wanting to go to Asia, but not nearly so much as many as we would like. Absolutely. Well, you know what? We are almost out of time. As always, it's always a pleasure to sit down and really have a real talking discussion right here on the radio. Well, thank you for inviting me, and I'm happy to come back whenever you feel the need. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, we have been here with Dr. Daniel Ball, and we didn't get to, we are going to take two minutes here. I'm going to give the ID, and we are going to give two minutes for one program that we haven't talked about that we need to talk about. You are listening right here on WCRS right here in Greenwood. Yes, I'm Ann Eller. Yes, this is Meet Me at the Diner. The news will be there at 6 o'clock, so how about we just spend a few minutes talking about the docent program for some of our seniors out there that would like to get involved and help out over there at Lander. Let's talk a little bit about that. And I'm glad you mentioned that program. Um, it started probably six or eight years, maybe a little longer ago, at the, at the suggestion of a good friend of ours, yours and mine, a Mr. Jeff Eller. Some of you may know Jeff. He said, why don't you start a dosing program at Lander? And I said, what in the world is that? And he explained to me that docents are... Uh, kind of white-collar volunteers that uh, uh, come to a campus uh, or to a library or a hospital that have had some professional experience. They've been engineers and doctors and business leaders, CEOs, politicians, retired professors that still want to contribute to the life of a community through their young. And so we started a docent program at the request of Dr. Mr. Jeff Eller. We started with 12 docents. They come to our campus, they can do whatever they want to do, however long they want to do it, and uh, where they want to do it. And we interview each docent and select them. They're not automatically given a docent slot. And we have now 60 docents. They, they work in a financial aid office, they, they work in the chemistry labs, they work in a multimedia center, they work in, in the radio station, they work in the computer uh, technology center, they work in athletics. One of them works in my office. and uh, What has it meant to Lander to have this program? Well, we're addicted to them. <laughs> uh, that's what it's meant. These are wonderful people. They, 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 uh, we have a lot of retirees here in the Greenwood area, and a lot of these folks have come to us and said, what can we do to help you? And uh, we said, well, we have this docent program, and that's how we recruited them. They actually bring themselves to the campus. They, they, they save you a lot of money, don't well, they? Well, we're addicted to them. I think, because yes, of the they, money, they, yes. Do, they do a lot of things for our students that we would have to otherwise pay for. Right. So if you are a person that is sitting out there thinking, I would like to do something, you can get involved at the campus, whether, as you said, working in financial aid, um, working in all these different departments, lots of possibilities. We have docents that work one hour a week. We have docents that work five hours a week. We have docents that work 30 hours a week. Uh, we have some only work once or twice a month. Sure. Uh, we have them when we have special programs. We have uh, ushers for our young children that come. We have a lot. We have six or eight thousand elementary and secondary kids come to our campus each year for various performances. For the they GLPA, have to be ushered yeah. the GLPA. They have right. to be ushered in and out. Our doses help with that. So, and uh, doc, isn't Dr. Uh, D. Whitstone? D. Dr. D. Whitstone uh, has uh, really. Been, he's been instrumental in our Honors College development um, and also our study abroad. Um, he's, a, by the way, a great-grandson of Sam Lander, and so he's kind of like a little sidekick of mine that I keep around. He's pretty handy. He's, a, he's an engineer. He's a Ph.D. engineer. He used to be in charge of facilities at Clemson. Right. So uh, I keep him around for advice, and he's just a wonderful gentleman that... Uh, loves Lander probably as much as his grandfather did, his great-grandfather. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to mention that program. Now, if somebody wants to call or... or just call Lander anywhere. Call my office, call the mission's office, somebody will get you to the, the right... What's the general number for Lander? 
8,000. 388-8000. Give them a call. Find out about the programs. Go there for Sunday brunch. Go there when you're said to yourself a thousand times, where am I going to go for lunch today? Where am I going to go for dinner? Check out, their, uh, check out that program and drop by Lander. You'll find a lot of wonderful things over there. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan Ball. My pleasure. All righty. That's going to do it for us. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody.